Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I am up here today at the James D. Julia Auction House in Maine in the winter, uh, taking a look at some of the firearms that they're going to be selling in their upcoming Spring of 2018 auction. And among them is this Beretta 38A. Now, I have been told by many different people, and you can read in historical sources, that one of the favorite submachine guns, in particular of the Axis forces, because they're the ones who had access to them, uh, going into World War II was the Beretta 38A. These were very well manufactured, and they just had a reputation as being excellent submachine guns. I, however, have never fired one of the original 38As. Now, as the war progressed, they would uh, simplify and reduce the cost on these guns progressively. And I've shot some of the later ones, the, the 1943 and 1944 iterations, and they're not bad. But I'm curious how the early one uh, how it actually handles. So a couple of the features to note on this thing, it has a tangent sight that can be set out to 500 meters, which even for a really good submachine gun is rather optimistic. It has a four slot compensator at the front to help control muzzle climb. It is unusual in that it ejects out the left side of the gun, which means we can get this camera shot and you'll still be able to see brass ejecting out there. Uh, kind of handy for a left-hander. It has a, a safety switch up here, fire and safe, and then two triggers. So the front trigger is semi-auto, and the rear trigger is full-auto. And in order to help you differentiate those, they actually serrated the full-auto trigger. So in theory, you can feel the difference. I don't know how well that may have worked under stress, but at any rate, it did mean that you never had to worry about having the selector switch set to the wrong thing. Uh, one of the other, other features of the early models is that they have a little sliding magazine cover door here. That obviously was quickly dispensed with when they started simplifying the guns. Uh, they also would get rid of the magazine shroud. Uh, the compensator kind of came and went. The sights were very quickly reduced to a simple notch. Uh, but early gun, let's see how it runs. Standard magazines for these were 20 and 40 rounds, and this is a 40. And they're a pretty good magazine too. Uh, double stack, double feed, so nice and easy to load. Snaps in there, bolts back. That is a fantastic submachine gun. Those guys were right. They were not kidding. Um, boy. Those sights just don't move when you're shooting. I think it's a combination of the weight of the gun. It is relatively heavy. A nice, relatively low rate of fire. And that compensator out at the front. Boy, they all really do their job. This thing is fantastic. There is an eternal question among people interested in World War II of, well, what's the best gun? What's the best rifle? What's the best submachine gun of World War II? And I have to say, this thing is a really strong contender. So in the past, some of the other guns I've really liked uh, included the Suomi and the Czech ZK-383. But I'll tell you what, this thing gives both of those definitely a run for their money. Um, the, the Suomi in particular, while a magnificent gun, is a very heavy gun. The Beretta here is quite a lot lighter. It uses nice handy, great easy to load 40 round stick mags, and they're a lot more accessible. Um, if you gave me a choice between this and the Suomi, and I had to carry it a long way, I would definitely choose the Beretta. Um, I think people, these probably have a poor reputation because they are Italian firearms of World War II, which people normally look down on. But Beretta is a fantastic company historically one of the longest, if not the longest, existing gun manufacturing company in the world, and they know what they're doing. This thing is just really nice. 
Sadly, like all submachine guns, it does succumb to the malfunction of being out of ammunition. So, unfortunately, I think that's all the shooting I get to do for today. If you'd like to add this Beretta to your own personal collection, get a gun that is underappreciated, maybe undervalued, take a look uh, at the link in the description text below, and that will take you to the catalog page at James Julia, where you can see their pictures and description. For this, it is a registered paper transferable NFA machine gun, so uh, as long as you are willing to go through that process, this can be yours. Thanks for watching.